Hi, my name is John Gibbons and I run a company called the John Gibbons Body Master Method and today we're going to look at manipulation of the sacroiliac joint. Now if I just um, show you on the skeleton what we're going to do, this is not so much a positional manipulation, what that means is if the, when I say the word SI joint, I'm going to just reverse those words and call it the IS joint, so the ilium on the, sorry, the ilium on the sacrum here. So I'm going to move this bone on this bone. So it's not moving the sacrum on the ilium, it's moving the ilium on the sacrum. And most of the time this innominate, which is the ilium and the ischium and the pubis is conjoined to one bone that we call the innominate. So I will try to mobilize or manipulate the innominate on the sacrum. And typically it tends to go forward, so I would move it back. If it's gone back, I would move it forward, but this one's more of a, of a gap-in technique. Sometimes this area gets a little bit stiff, so I'm going to place my hand on top and use it, rather than pushing it forwards or backwards, just literally just thrust, just to gap it. And sometimes that works to allow the joint to move a little freer. Now I've got a patient in front of me where we're going to utilize, utilize the technique. So Dave, can you have a lie on your side, please, towards me? Now, what we're gonna get the patient to do is come towards me a little bit, like that. And I tend to, for this technique, because there are many, I tend to bring the knee up and then place that into the crease of the knee, but I'm going to use my leg because I want to bring the innominate fully into posterior motion just to increase the tension here. From here, I'm going to place this hand to stabilize, and then I'm going to feel the L5 and onto the S1, and I'm gonna fully rotate him down to the level, and then that locks the L5 onto the S1, because I only wanna move this bit here. This hand can go there, his head can be in this position, and this arm can just relax here. Now, the couch has to be a little lower rather than higher, and a lot of the osteopaths and chiropractors will use their body weight to try to, to go through the thrust. If the patient is flexible enough, you should be able to roll the patient, so I tend to roll, so the key ones on the nip is, I tend to roll as if they're gonna fall in this position here. I have to stabilize with my opposite hand, but there's no thrust in this hand. There's the PSIS, and what I'm gonna to try to do is, rather than going that way or this way, is just hand on, my arm is over. Sometimes I'll use my body weight, so I'm gonna roll. Take a small breath in, please, Dave. And as he breathes out, I'm gonna roll, lock, thrust. And then we have a cavitation of the ilium on the sacrum. Now, what we're gonna do, is if we roll on the other side, let me just check the other side. And rest your head there, please. So we'll do the similar sort of technique. So I'm going to bring his top leg, bend up bottom one leg a little bit. So I'm gonna use my leg. In fact, I'm gonna bring him a little bit towards me from here. I'm gonna bring this one up just to increase the tension here. And again, hand to stabilize. Palpate L5 and S1. And I'm gonna slowly rotate him down to the area. Hand there, and his neck is fine arm just to relax, find the PSIS again, so I'm going to stabilize, I'm going to roll as if a patient's going to fall in this position, with a knee up, take a small breath in please, and as he breathes out, the thrust is going to be down, okay, and then we had a little cavitation of the ilium on the sacrum, have a line in your back please. I hope you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel as you will get all my, my new videos coming out, thanks for watching.